Okay, in the last section, we talked about the basics of what this exam is. Again, we're going to solve all the questions on the 100 ton uh, near coastal navigation chart problems, uh, sample examination provided by the Coast Guard. Uh, so let's get started. Question number one. What does the precautionary area southeast of Block Island refer to? Well, this is a straightforward problem. Uh, it's not too difficult. And uh, anytime I solve these kind of problems, I want to make sure that I read the question uh, very carefully. So again, we're looking at southeast of Block Island. It's easy to make a mistake and go southwest, but no, nope, we're going to be southeast. And so here's Block Island. And then I notice over here is a precautionary area and it says C note Charlie, C note Charlie. Okay, so I need to look around the chart and find note Charlie, and it tends to be um, up in this kind of stuff here. And so there is note Charlie, and it reads uh, for the precautionary area, traffic within the precautionary area may consist of vessels operating between Narragansett Bay and one of the established traffic lanes. Okay, cool. So now I look at the answers that I have, and it says, uh, what does the precautionary area southeast of Block Island refer to? recommended traffic lanes, military exercise areas, national marine refuges, or dumping grounds for hazardous waste. Uh, so clearly the answer is A. That would be the best answer for this question. Again, a test strategy is I'll always go back and RTFQ, read the question, and uh, make sure that I got the right geographic reference, the right direction, and uh, the right answer for what they're looking for. Question number two is what soundings are indicated by a blue tint on this chart? And then before I look at the chart, I'll look at the answers. They all have to do with 30, and then it's fathoms or feet, and more or less. So there's four varieties of answer. And basically, I need to figure out what do the, the blue areas on this chart refer to. And um, clearly, that means shallow water uh, for the most part. So um, that helps us eliminate answers of A and D, where it says 30 fathoms or more, 30 feet or more. So I would you know, cross those out. And now I'm down to two choices. So 30 feet or less or 30 fathoms or less. Um, so I really don't even need to look too closely at the chart. But if I do, just to point it out, you can see all these soundings all over the chart, these numbers. That's 54, 59, 53, 23, 30, uh, 24, 26. And so what I need to do is find out what the line between the white and the blue delineates. And the way to do that is look along the blue until you find an italicized number. There's one, 30. Uh, and you keep going around and you can find some more. You know, there's another one, 30. So you're not looking at these numbers in bigger print. You're looking for the italicized small ones to indicate what the contour line means. For instance, there's an 18 um, contour line. Out here, there's a 60 contour line. And there's a 120 contour line. So now I just need to know what these refer to. And the way to do that is to look around the chart. And in two places on the chart, always, you know, up in magenta here is going to say soundings are in feet. Soundings are in feet. Also on the title block of the chart, it'll say soundings are in feet at mean lower low water. So uh, when I go back to the exam, I can see that uh, the correct answer should be 30 feet or less. Again, I'll read the question one more time, look at the answers one more time, and make sure that I choose the best answer, which would be B in this case. Sweet, so we got two questions done, 20% of the way through the exam. Unfortunately, those are kind of the easiest questions on the exam. All right, so problem number three. So here's my strategy for problem number three. If I wanna sail from point A to point B, but that there is a current or a wind that's affecting me, um, clearly I can't point from A to B because I'll get pushed in the, away from the direction of the wind or in the direction of the current, right? And so there's two parts to this. There's the wind and the current. And it's important to know the directions that these forces are impacting us on. So the problem says that there's a westerly wind and that means that there's a wind from the west. So winds are always described by the direction that they blow from, whereas currents are described in the direction that they, they set to. So the problem says that there's a current setting in the direction of 047 degrees true. Right? So a westerly wind and a current setting to the northeast. So clearly the boat is going to get pushed this way based on uh, the winds and the currents. So in order to solve the problem, we need to point a little bit higher and then we'll crab our way over towards point B to get to our destination. So our strategy is going to be 
to plot these two points, first of all, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about how to solve the problem from there. So the first thing we're going to do is plot. Okay, so now that I've got uh, my points plotted, then I can take the, the weems here and plot a line directly between them. Okay, so that's the course that I want to steer. I want to take my boat from point A to point B. However, this wind and this current are going to affect us, right? So the boat is going to get pushed that direction by the wind and the current. And so to solve for that, solving for the wind is actually fairly straightforward because it tells me in the problem that my leeway is two degrees. So all I really need to do is point two degrees up into the wind and we'll be good. So we'll save that for later. The current on the other hand is a little bit more challenging. And there's two parts to solving a current problem. So I've got the course that I want to steer, but the current is given to me at 1.2 knots or 1.2 nautical miles per hour, okay? And so that means I need to do everything in terms of one hour. So also in the problem, it tells me that my speed is 7.5 knots. So in one hour, nautical miles per hour, in one hour, I will go 7.5 nautical miles. So if I measure off 7.5, nautical miles and build some vectors based on this, then I'll be able to solve for the, the course that I need to steer. So I'm going to build a vector that's 7.5 miles in this direction. And then I'm going to take this, uh, this current that's been described to me and I can do one of two things. I can either plot it from point A, go 047 at 1.2, or I can go from point B, uh, this, this new point B, uh, in an opposite direction. But most people prefer to do this, so we're gonna stick with that. So if I take point A and I plot the current in the direction that it's setting, 047, um, at 1.2 knots, or nautical miles per hour, and then I go in the direction that I'm steering for one hour, at 7.5 knots, uh, the resultant vector here, this line, will be the course that I need to steer to to crab my boat successfully along my course line so that I don't get blown down too far. So this is what I'm looking for right here. So the way that we'll need to do that is we'll need to first plot out 7.5 nautical miles. So I can do that over here. And now I have this new point, which represents one hour of travel. Now I can plot the current. Uh, the whole water column is gonna be set 1.2 miles over every hour in this direction, right? So up here, down here, it's all gonna be set in that direction. So if I'm gonna do the vectors, like I say, I can plot out this direction from here, or I can plot the opposite direction from here, but I'm gonna stick with this method. So I'm gonna go out in a direction of 047 um, degrees true at 1.2 nautical miles. And now this represents the set of the current. So if I plot from this position to this position in one hour, now I know the course that I need to steer. So that allows me to solve the vector problem. Now I can take this, bring it up to the nearest longitude line, and read out that I've got a value of 152 degrees true. All right, so this 152 is this vector here. This line doesn't matter. That's the course that I want to make good. This, is the, this is, represents the course that I need to steer. This represents the course corrected 
for current. But I've got to do the, the leeway as well. And the problem says that I've got two degrees of leeway. What that means is that if the wind is from the west, the boat is getting set two degrees to the east. And so to solve that problem, you just need to steer up a little bit into the wind. So we need to steer over in that direction, which on the compass rows means I need to add two degrees. And so I come up with a final answer of one, five, four degrees true course to steer. And that should be my answer. So if I look into the uh, choices, I don't see 154, but I see 155, 156, 140. So in this case, the best answer is to choose 155 choice B, which is correct.